Hi, my name is Kat Evans from BCF Technology and in this video we're going to show you how to use most of the basic functions that are on your Beta Image Suite version 4 software. So to turn the Beta on, for the processor part you just need to reach over the back and turn on the on off button. What then happens is as the machine powers up, it starts off by giving you an orange light. This will then change to a flashing green light and then finally a steady green light. Once you've got a steady green light, the beta is more than ready to go. Computer, you can turn either before or after the beta, just by simply turning on the computer as you normally would. And now your system's booted up, you can input the username and password that we've given you. Now you're on your work list screen. So from here, you can search for patients or you can input new patients if you need to. In the bottom left hand corner of the screen you have a reset filter button and by doing that that resets the filter. At the moment the filter is showing today and if you reset the filter that opens it up to show everything that's on the scanner. Then if you click into status you can see the various statuses that an image can have. Scheduled is a patient who's been put onto the system but doesn't have any pictures. Started is a patient who's been started but hasn't been ended yet. Cancelled is somebody that you've decided you aren't going to x-ray and have cancelled out of them. And ended is where all your completed patients should ideally be. Once you've ended a patient, this enables you to see the images via your mini packs around the practice. So I've set it to all to show me everybody, and then I'll click into one of the other boxes. What I can also do is click into client slash animal name and type part of the animal's name and hit return, and it'll actually search just down to patients called Freddy. So I've typed FR. Alternatively, if you clear that box, you can click and have them in reverse order or ascending order. And you can also do this by date. So if you can remember you x-rayed a patient on a specific date but not their name, you can search by the date. To input a new patient, if you go to the bottom left corner of the screen again, you've got your new patient icon. So if you click there, it takes you into your patient entry page. You can see on the screen that there's five boxes in orange. These do have to be completed. First of all is study date, which the machine will fill in for you. The next option is client ID number. So if your practice management system produces a number, you can input this at this point. Alternatively, if you're doing a HIP score, we recommend that you use the Kennel number in that box, because then that will be part of the image. And for the HIP score, you can then use the tattoo slash chip ID number to give the patient their tattoo slash chip ID number. And again, that would be part of the image and keeps the BVA happy. Then if you want to input your client name, you can do. And you can tab between the boxes if you want to, to show you to move around easily. And then input the patient's name. You then have four options along the bottom. On the right, you have start which enables you to save this patient, sorry, save, which enables you to save this patient and then go back to the work list. You have save and new, which is saves this patient and clears the box ready for you to input another patient. Cancel will cancel out of the patient or start will take you into the patient. So when you need to process a plate, remember that the grey side is upmost and it's red arrow to red arrow. So position the plate, push it forward until it stops, and then give it a push with two hands. The machine does like a determined push rather than a gentle push, as that makes it easy for the machine to pick up the plate and take the screen out. So once you've processed your plate, your image will come out, and you can nearly always guarantee it's going to be the wrong way up. So the first thing I always do with pictures is use one of these icons to actually rotate or flip the picture depending on what you need to do with it. So ideally you want your animal walking off the left hand side of the screen. Then you can play with your brightness and contrast by using the window width and level button up here. And by doing this you can dark, brighten and darken the picture and make it more or less contrasty. Ideally though you shouldn't need to make many changes here because if your exposure settings are correct the picture will come out looking nice. Your next icon in is markers and by clicking onto markers, this enables you to enter text onto the screen. On this picture, we've managed to collimate off our marker, so by tapping, we can then choose and pop a marker on. 
and you can move these around the screen to wherever you need them. You can also erase them, so if you put the wrong marker on, it's very easy to remove it and replace it with the correct marker if you need to. But this is actually a right elbow, so we don't want the left. We'll go back to having the right and pop it there. Then you also here have your zooming and, rotate and zooming functions. So free zoom enables you to zoom the picture up and down by holding down the left mouse button. You also have the option to scale to fit, which scales the picture to fit the screen. Or if you right click onto that one, you go into full screen mode. So you've got a nice picture uncluttered by anything around it. And to exit out of there, bottom left hand corner, exit full screen. You also have an option to use a magnifying glass if you need to, if you just want to look at part of the picture. Then you also have your black surround mask or cropping functions. And what this does is enable you to recrop the picture and occasionally this can be really useful if you need to tidy up the picture or if you've put the incorrect marker on or some other reason. And this is well worth playing with to improve image quality. And then you choose reprocess and that tidies the picture up. At this point, if you're really happy with the picture, you can just hit accept and that will save the picture and it will develop a green tick on it, as can be seen on some of the others. Alternatively, if it's a bad picture, you can hit reject and that red puts a red cross by the picture. But don't worry, if you do reject a picture, you can always unreject it if you need it back. You also have your advanced tools on the system and these are up here with the second tab. So if you go into advanced tools, you gain functions like inversion, where black goes to white and white goes to black. And also this is where all your measurement tools are, which are all shown here. So ruler is your most simple one. And when you bring the ruler over the screen, from the point of the arrow, when you first click, just move the mouse to where you need to measure to and click again, and it will give you a measurement. And if you don't want that measurement, you can always drop it in the bin. This is also where you find angle. So the first point you click is the corner of the angle and then you can stretch that out to wherever you need it to be. And if you realise you've made a slight mistake, you can always tweak it and move that around the screen to where you need it to be. You also have all your other advanced tools in here, like your vertebral heart score, which obviously we wouldn't use on this image as it's an elbow, and your, heart, your hip dysplasia tools as well, which again, aren't much help on an elbow. You also have an undo button and a reset button if you want these, and you have some icons for drawing if you need to as well. So once you've taken your pictures, you may well need to send them somewhere else. So you can do this either by exporting to a memory stick or by burning them to CD. It is vital though, if you want to export your pictures, you do remember to have accepted them, because if you haven't accepted a picture, you can't send it to anyone else. You click down the bottom left hand corner of the screen on the export icon and then you choose media. This enables you to export to different media. We don't currently have a USB stick grade, uh, plugged in so you can see it's greyed out but we do have a CD in the CD drive. So if you're burning to disk, if we click on the CD and then choose which pictures you want. Now at the moment there is a foot picture available as well but because we haven't accepted the picture so it has no green tick you're not able to burn it to disk. So it is really important to remember to accept pictures if you are going to be doing anything with them. At the bottom here, we can choose what format we want, and normally that will either be DICOM, which is what you're using if it's going away for hip or elbow score, or if it's going to the BVA, um, going to a referral centre. And you do have an option to remove your institute name and your patient information. But if these are going away for referral, you do need to leave that on. Also, you can add a DICOM viewer, and this enables people to pop the CD into their computer and view the images. Or you can choose JPEG, and this enables you to just simply burn JPEG, which are great if you're doing a presentation, and you can choose the size of these. And once you've decided what you're burning and where you're burning it to, just simply click on the start, and it will start burning. If there are a lot of pictures, this may take a little while, because obviously lots of pictures is a big file and can take a few minutes to burn. One thing to remember with computerised radiography systems is the plates themselves are quite sensitive to heat and background radiation and also scatter. So one thing you can do to improve your image quality is to routinely erase your plates. We normally suggest doing this at the beginning of the day if you've not used the machine for a few days or in the summer if it's exceptionally hot it may be worth doing this each morning. If you click up on the top on the scanner 
icon. This will take you into the screen which is scanner status which shows you what the scanner is up to. But then you gain the option here for arrays and it asks you to please insert a cassette. When you pop the cassette in it will erase anything that's on that cassette so make sure that you don't have a patient's radiographs on there. But the good thing is when the cassette goes in the machine will actually ask you are you sure you want to erase. Normally during the working day though if you're taking lots of x-rays you don't need to re-erase because what the machine does is after every picture that you take it erases the cassette ready for you so that as soon as the cassette's released from the machine it's ready to go again. One of the great new innovations we now have for the V2CR system is the dental plates. These are the size 2 and size 4 plates that we're used to using for dental radiography, but rather than having to have a separate processor or the snap and shape little ones for the film processing, you can now use CR plates and process them through your Vita. Before you use them, you do need to erase them because they are quite sensitive to light, and when you're actually using them, they need to be popped into a hygiene cover, which is one of these. These are single use. So once you've taken your picture and you've finished with it, you rip off the strip and extract your screen. So you can see this is the size 4. And then this simply goes into the holder that comes with the system. Slides in to the holder and then what you do is pop it into the special dental plate holder. And that is very simple to do. All you do then is red arrow to red arrow once again and process that through as normal. Once you've finished doing your radiography, you can turn your machine off. The great thing about the Image Suite software is if you have got pictures you haven't accepted, don't worry, they'll still be there when you turn the machine back on. And you can turn it off either from the radiography page here or from the work list. All you need to do is to click the top right hand corner of the screen on the system menu and then do exit desktop and then as for any other computer, just go through the start menu and shut the computer down. So hopefully the video has been really helpful in helping you to better understand using your Vita Image Suite version 4 software. But if you do have any further questions, please feel free to give us a shout. You can either contact your local account manager or give us a shout at the office. Or if you want to, have a look on the website where there's further information. Thank you.